Hey everyone, this is Andy. I just wanted to show you another simple, relatively simple hardware hack that I did on an older system that I own. This is a Sega Nomad. In case you don't know what it is, it's a handheld unit. It's basically a Sega Genesis and a handheld unit. It takes the full-size Sega Genesis cartridges. Um, and it's a pretty nice little system. I managed to pick this one up um, surprisingly cheaply on Craigslist. Once in a while you can find them real cheap. Um, eBay they sell for about 60 bucks. Uh, I picked mine up considerably cheaper than that. Um, it's a pretty nice system and it works really well. The problem you have with it is that unlike the Game Gear, there's nowhere to put batteries in this thing. You basically have two choices. You can either plug it in and run with the cord, or you can get a power pack for the back, which is great. There is a power pack made for it, so that's fine. Here it is. The problem with these is none of them work anymore. It's called the Sega Power Back, and it clips right onto the Sega, the Sega Nomad. And the problem with these is, no matter where you get it, it will not work, I guarantee. Okay, this one I actually bought off eBay. It was new old stock, which means it's never been used, and it didn't work. Okay, so you should probably not pay more than 10 bucks for one of these, because I absolutely promise you the batteries in it will be dead. So what you have to do to get this to work is you have to modify it. And I followed some instructions. Um, they weren't explicit instructions, but basically a, a loose guide on what to use for this. Um, and I'll post a link to that on the description to this video. And he showed some basic instructions on how to modify this thing. And it's really not that difficult if you have some real, real rudimentary electronics knowledge. To get this thing open is actually not too hard. You take an old credit card and you can crack this thing open. It's got a seam on the side. And what you do is you run this credit card through that seam and you work it until it cracks open. There's glue in here, but the glue is not very strong. It's fairly easy to crack open. So let's see if I can get this one open pretty easily. This one does not have glue in it anymore because it's been opened before, obviously. Um, yours will not open quite this quickly, but I'll show you what's inside mine. This one's already been modified. <clears throat> Again, I followed the instructions online. Um, on another video which I'll post in the description. This is a Sony um, video camera battery and this is the original charging circuit for the charger that you buy to charge this battery. And then there's a little piece of the original Sega Nomad charging board and a lot of rewiring. It's pretty simple actually. If Again, if you have some real basic knowledge of electronics, you can use a multimeter and you can test for continuity and things like that. Uh, test for voltages. If you can do that stuff, you can make this. Okay. So originally what this had in it was a power pack of NICAD batteries and they went right in here and it looked like six AA batteries, three rows of two, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six. And what and it had a board that was right here that was about this long and sat up on end where this one is now. This is actually part of the original board. I've cut off a lot of the pieces that I didn't need. And this charging circuit, you have the plug here on the end. And this charging circuit went into a board here and then plugged into the batteries and went out to these two leads. Now the batteries are dead. I guarantee you if you find one of these anywhere, yard sale, new old stock, eBay, anywhere you find this, Amazon, Craigslist, this will not work. So don't pay more than $10 for one of these power packs because it won't work. You're gonna have to mod it to get it to work. Okay, I had to do a couple things. I had to go in here and cut out. There's these supports. You can kind of see them here, these curved pieces. Those held the original battery pack. Um, there were more of them throughout this case that had to be removed to make room for the new battery. Um, I did that the hard way, which was with a utility knife. and I scored them and then broke them off by hand. If you have a Dremel tool, it'll make that a whole lot easier. Other than that, basically it's some soldering, running some wires, uh, some desoldering, cutting a circuit board, cutting another circuit board. I'll show you, it's pretty simple. This is the other piece of the old charging circuit. This is the part that I cut off from the old Sega charging circuit. Most of it's still here. Um, I cut the board right there. You don't want this charging circuit. Okay, it will work. Uh, you can leave this original charging circuit in, I believe, and, and just put a new battery in and wire it up and I think it will work. The problem is this isn't a very good charging circuit. Uh, this is not as nice as the charging circuit that will come with the battery charger that you buy for the battery you're going to use. 
This is the charger. It would plug into a wall. It has this little flip out plug. Okay. This is the charger you'll, you'll buy with the new battery. The battery and the charger together cost you about 12 bucks. Um, you crack this open, and I've already obviously removed everything that was in here, but this board was about this big, which was too big to fit into the Sega Nomad pack. But luckily, because it has this plug on it, about half of the board was the power supply that took 120 volts AC current and converted it to 12 volts DC, and then the other half was the charging circuit. And since I only needed the charging circuit, I was able to remove all of this. And I did kind of the Ben Heckendorn method, which is you, you start cutting things away and taking, taking components off and see what you can take off until it stops working. And then you know you've gone too far. So this is the half of the board that I saved from that charger. And you can see where I've cut it right there, actually. I did kind of a hack job on it. But the other half of this board was nothing but power supply. And if you're using the 12 volt power pack that a Sega Genesis uses, it already converts it to 12 volts. You don't need any of that. So I cut that off. I took the charging circuit. I wired it into this piece of the original board. And the reason that I kept this piece of the original board was because I wanted to use the original plug. I like my mods to look original. And so I kept the original plug. I hooked in this new LED that came off of the new charger because the new LED has two colors. It does green and red. If it's red, that means your battery's dead. If it's green, it means it's charged. And I thought that was a cool feature. So I, I wired that into the old board. I wired a couple of jumper wires down to the new charger, and I cut off all the rest of the board that I didn't need, which was a lot of it. This thing works really well. It's really nice. It gives me hours and hours of play. I haven't actually killed this yet. Um, I did this about a month ago hook this up and I probably put about three hours of play time on this battery pack after it was initially charged and then since then it's been sitting in a closet for about a month so I played for about three hours um, and then it threw it in the closet for about a month since then and it still shows if I hook it up I'll show you right now it still shows it being charged so this is the original Sega Genesis power pack 12 volt big brick power pack and I left the original plug in because I like it to be original. As you can see, I got a nice green light, which says that this thing is actually still charged, even though I've played on it for several hours. The other benefit is it's lighter than the original. So not only will, does it work better, but it's lighter. Again, you will not find one of these that works. If you find one that works, it probably won't work for long. So don't pay any kind of serious money for this. You should pay no more than 10 bucks for this and probably pay no more than $15 for the battery and the charger that you're going to tear apart. See, all in all, you've got $25 invested. That's really not that bad. I'll show you that this does work. It slides right onto the back. As you can see. Ta-da! And we'll put a game in there. I'll show you that it does work. Beavis and Butthead, a classic. Ta-da! So, you can see it does work. Anyway, this is a great little system. If you can come by Sega Nomad, they're awesome. But if you get one, you're going to need to get a power back, and you're going to need to mod it. There are people online who will mod them for a fee. Uh, I am not one of those people. It takes a couple hours to mod one, so it doesn't really pay. Um, what I would have to charge to mod one of these is not worth what... It's, it's just it's way more money than it's worth so if you can if you can figure it out yourself or find somebody with some real simple electronics knowledge I have no more electronics knowledge than your average high school student who's taken an electronic shop class and they can probably figure it out and help you get it working as you can see it works beautifully and that's it it's a really nice mod this is a real nice system if you can get your hands on one so good luck